Hello there, and welcome back to Measure Killer on YouTube. It's Klaus here again, the lead developer of Measure Killer, and today I will give you an introduction of the tenant analysis mode in Measure Killer. With this mode, you can run a full scan of your fabric slash Power BI tenant. Keep in mind that this is part of the premium features of Measure Killer, so a license is required. You can request a trial license by going to the link in the description. So let's do this. With Measure Killer open, let's go ahead and select Tenant Analysis. If you're not a tenant admin, you are not going to be able to run this mode. But you can use the limited tenant analysis mode, which is designed for developers. First thing I have to do is authenticate. Now a filters window will appear. Here you can select a couple of filters before running the tenant analysis. Usually the default options are really good, so I'm just going to click Next. Wait a couple of seconds until the analysis is finished. For large tenants, this can take a while. Since our tenant is really more for testing and small, it took only 18 seconds, almost 19. The first thing we see here is a couple of tabs. Some of them are disabled by default because we first need to run the analysis by selecting them in the selection tree. But you can already get information about your artifacts in your tenant. So if you go to the workspaces tab, here you'll be able to see every single artifact in all the workspaces across your tenant, including users and users with limited access. The lineage tab will list all of the semantic models and data flows and build the entire lineage both upstream and downstream. So if I go and search for the Weta data set, the data set that I used in previous videos, I can see that it's using a couple of data flows, the paginated reports connected to it, and also the reports connected to it. I can also check data flows with which data source the data flows he is using, also data marts, downstream data marts. So there is a data mark connected to this data flow. The data source lineage tab is very similar, but the top level items of this tree are the data sources. I can search a data source and check the downstream artifacts to this data source. The access tab is also really interesting. You can select a view, for example, the users level view, I'll be able to see which artifacts the users has access to from workspaces to semantic models, reports, and also including fabric items. I can select other views, for example, the semantic models view, and check a particular semantic model and see who has access to that model. Going back to the selection tab, here I can select semantic models, reports, or data flows and get some more information about them. So let's go ahead and select the weather data set. I don't need to select the downstream artifacts because Measure Killer will fetch them automatically. Let's also select a couple of data flows in a model with row level security. Once you have everything selected, just click Run. An XMLA authentication window will appear, Authenticate. After running in the Semantic Models tab, you'll be able to see all of the analyzed models. Here you have information like the storage size, best practices score, average refresh duration, and more. I encourage you to explore this table in detail and don't forget to right click on items so you can get more information. For example, 
I can check the best practices for the weather data set if I right click on it. The data flows tab is very similar to the semantic bottles tab, but now here you'll see all the analyzed data flows. You can also right click. And depending on the column that you choose, different options will appear. The Power BI reports is very similar to the previous two. You have all the reports listed, views, visuals. You can also drill down to the pages, custom visuals, and also the best practices for reports. Again, if you right click, you have more information available to you. The DAX Expressions tab is where you can search through all the semantic models and reports for report level measures for DAX expressions. I can search, for example, for average, and then I'll see all the expressions that contain the average text somewhere. The M expressions tab is very similar, but we'll search through the M expressions instead of the DAX expressions. And finally, the row level security tab will show only the models with row level security. So you can check the rows who belong to that row, the expressions used, and more. Another interesting feature of tenant analysis that is worth mentioning are the exports. We have a list with different exports here, and I cannot go into detail, otherwise this video will be an hour long. So that's why I encourage you to test them out if you can. If you want more information about tenant analysis, please feel free to click on the link in the description. It will take you to the tenant analysis official documentation. So that was an introduction to the tenant analysis mode in Measure Killer. Please don't forget to do the YouTube thing, like, subscribe and whatever. And if you want more information about tenant analysis, don't be shy and just click on the links in the description. Again, thank you very much and I will see you in the next video, hopefully.